So no doubt many of you have heard about Dolly 2, the AI algorithm that can take whatever text you put into a search bar and then just generates the art that you ask it to make. Now that's still not available to the general public, but there are versions of Dolly that you can actually get access to that you can use. And that's what this tutorial is gonna be. Here you can see in just a matter of seconds, I generated this. I asked it to make an oil painting of a Chihuahua sitting at a dinner table with warm candle lights having its dinner and look what it gave me in just a few seconds. Here is another one I did. And over here, I asked it of a Victorian era man in an oil painting standing on the rocks, looking out over the ocean. In just a few seconds, it gave me this result. And over here, I asked it to draw an oil painting of a girl standing at the entrance of an ancient ruin surrounded by giant monoliths in the style of an oil painting. And look what it did in a few seconds. So if this is something that you think is interesting and you want to learn it as a beginner and you're interested in AI and how you can use it in your workflow as an artist. In my case, I'm an animator and a 3D artist. And then I'm also going to be showing you another one that's even better, um, but it's a little bit more involved, but still very easy. I'm going to show you exactly where to get it. We're going to be running it on Google Colab. And this one you can put in prompts. Here I asked it to just to make a whale swimming underwater over a fantasy underwater city. <laughs> and look at that. I've asked this to make all sorts of things. In fact, here you can see just some examples of the things that I have asked these different programs to make, and you can do it too. Everything I'm about to show you here, you can have access to as well. You don't have to pay for it. So if you wanna watch this and it's exciting, let's get into it and definitely watch till the end. There's a lot of really cool stuff packed in here and you're just gonna love it. So by far the easiest one to use is Dolly Mini. All you have to do is click on the link that I am providing below and you're gonna see a search bar and a button that says run. All you have to do is click here and type in whatever and then just run it and it'll generate the images for you. So for me, I'm just gonna do something really random. I'm gonna go with um, maybe a historical painting of a poodle standing in a field of flowers. I mean, I'm just making this up as I go. You can type in anything. I'm gonna click run and let's see what the results look like. And there you have it. That took about 15 seconds on my computer and it's not perfect by any means, but you can see here, this is actually making it from scratch based on different kind of models that it's been trained on. But I mean, I could have typed in anything. This is what I typed in. And even though these aren't perfect results, if I wanna just like a rough idea to get me going for my own kind of painting or art project, this would be absolutely fantastic. I could already see a few here, like this one here, that looks almost pretty good. And um, once you click on one, you can just go with your arrow buttons through here and look at the different results. Now, the more information you give it here, it can really help it out. You can try wording things a little bit different. But another thing you can do is if you don't like the results, you can just run that again. And it's never gonna give you the same results because it's actually an AI trying to do it, things creatively. So it's gonna do it different every time. And what you can do as well, like I said, you can change the different inputs here. But look at that. I've just clicked it in another eight seconds or so. It's generated more images of a poodle standing in the field and given enough time if you do this a few times you could really get some pretty cool results once you're happy with one like one that you like you can just simply um, go ahead and click on it so let's for example this one here i'd right click on it and then go save as image save it somewhere in my computer or whatever um, you can then take this into something like photoshop or something there's a lot of tools out there that can up res images for you or you can just use it as a reference so pretty cool stuff let's just try out a few more crazy ideas well let's go with an acrylic painting of a bear riding a bike so let's see what happens and there you have it that took a few seconds now this one um, you can see it's a lot more abstract but still it's pretty cool you could still like i said use this as a prompt or a reference for something else that you're working on you could run that as many times as you want um, but you can see here this is definitely a bit more stylized uh, let's try something like a historical painting of a girl standing on the moon holding some balloons and let's see what that does. So this is the fun thing here. You can literally type in anything and it'll try and make it for you. And you can run that as many times as you will. I'm gonna almost finish off of this one. I'm gonna move on to some other ones. They can definitely do things a little bit better. But this one here by far, definitely one of the easier ones. You can have a ton of fun of it. You could even use it on your mobile and it is really fast. That just took a few seconds. You could already see here. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Look at that. Um, it's got some pretty nice looking ideas here. You can just run that again. 
And there, I've run it again a few seconds later. Look at that, some more results. I mean, some of these are actually pretty cool. I really like what it's done here. This could actually be, um, even though it's not perfect, it can be a really good um, reference or an idea generator for the projects that, you, that you're that you working on. And that's really at the moment how a lot of people are using these. This is not as good as the Dolly 2 model, which is not yet available to the public, but you can see how this can be really useful. So I'm gonna quickly show you a few examples that I've made with this one here, um, tweaking around with things a little bit. And here you can see on the screen, um, they look pretty awesome. And these are real results I got from using this Dolly Mini app online. So pretty powerful tool. Let's move on to the next one. I guess I'm gonna try a few more prompts. I'm gonna go with a historical painting again of a man viewed from the back standing in a field of cacti in the middle of the desert. So let's give that a shot and see what we get. And wow, that is actually pretty good. Um, that's really hard almost to believe that that just took a few seconds and it made nine of them based on just something I typed in. And by no means are they perfect pieces of art. But man, if you were looking for some art inspiration or you just wanted a general idea of where you might go with an idea, this is actually pretty amazing. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna keep doing a few of these prompts just for your, your entertainment. You can skip ahead to the next version of Dolly if you want, but just so you guys can see what it can do, I'm gonna just type things in. I'm not gonna actually record myself typing it. I'll just have it ready to go. I'll quick run and we'll go through a few things real quick and see what it can really do. So I've typed in a historical painting of a woman with red curly hair standing at the bottom of a waterfall surrounded by a swarm of butterflies. Let's see what we get. And once again, wow, just in a few seconds, look at this result here. Um, this one here actually looks pretty cool. It's a little bit abstract and you'll notice that Dolly doesn't really do faces. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, I won't get into it, but just overall really, really cool. I really like this one here. In fact, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this and I'm gonna save that. And uh, let's run that again and see if we get a bit of a different result. And there we go again, just a few seconds later. Um, look at this one here. That's really kind of creative how it's done that. And um, this one here even, look at that. <laughs> Pretty cool. I think because it doesn't do the faces, let's try doing it with an instruction to get them from behind. So I'm gonna quickly change that. So I've changed it to a matte oil painting of a girl with red curly hair standing in a field of grass holding the moon in her arms. So let's see what that gives us as a result. And wow, look at that. Just in a few seconds. That is just absolutely amazing. I mean, look at, look at this one right here. Like that is incredible. In fact, I'm gonna take a screenshot of that one as well. That's pretty cool. So we'll get on now to the next thing, but you guys can already see why this is just such a awesome tool and I uh, can definitely be a great asset when it comes to um, brainstorming some ideas. So uh, let's get on to the next version of Dolly, which I like a lot more. Okay, so the next one we're gonna be looking at is one of my more favorite ones. And this one is the Gina AI Dolly Flow, which you can get on GitHub. Once again, that's gonna be in the description below. So you can just click on the link. And um, you can see here, there's a whole bunch of different things you can download. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down here to this over here, and you're gonna see a human in the loop workflow for creating HD images from text. Now um, down here, there's a whole diff lot of different ways. I mean, you can read for all of this documentation and examples. There's a lot of different ways you can run this on different interfaces, different platforms. Um, but what I like to do is to use the notebook on Google Colab. It's the easiest one because it does it all for you. It sets everything up. So as long as you have a Google account, just go ahead and click and open in Colab. That's it. And now it's gonna run. And here you can see we have it. It's now set up a client server for you. And uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just scroll down here and you can see all of these different lines of code, right? Now, um, you don't have to know what any of this is because all you have to do is click on these little buttons here to um, run it for you and it'll download it. So the first one is to install something called Gina and you're gonna click on this Python script here, it's gonna run it. So pip install Gina and it's gonna give you this warning just saying that Google did not authorize this. Go ahead and click run anyway. It's just a standard warning that pops up and you're gonna see here it's gonna install um, Gina for you. 
Now I've already installed it and had it running. So if you're doing it for the first time, you're probably gonna see there is a little tab down here that says to restart runtime or something like that. Um, just to be sure, I'm gonna do it as well. You can just go to runtime and go restart runtime. And then it's gonna say restart runtime and you're gonna click yes. And this is something I found you have to do, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay, and then once you see that little green tick up here, what you can do is you can start running all of these different um, instructions. So let's start with this first one here. We have provided the demo server for you to play with. So just click on it. And once you get a little tick there, you can now go on to the fun part, which is typing whatever you want in here, right? Now you can actually see here are a bunch of chihuahuas at a dinner table. That's there because I actually ran this earlier and that's the result that's still there. But um, what you can do is just come in here and type whatever you want in here. So the prompt, right? So um, I'm gonna type in an oil painting of a chihuahua sitting at the dinner table with warm candle lights. Okay, that's just some random thing. So an oil painting of a chihuahua sitting at the dinner table with warm candle lights. I'm gonna now click on this little button here. You see the little tick. And in this one here that says, let's submit to the server and visualize the results, that's the fun one. So you can now click on it. And uh, depending on um, how many people are on the server, how many clients, um, this could take a short time or a long time. If there's too many people, it can sometimes, you can get some errors and some um, things popping up. I have read about that online. So in this case, you can see the little thing here is having to think about it. So when this is done, I'll come back and I'll show you the result and we'll go from there. And here you can see the result that took about 40 seconds or so, there should be a, Okay, so the time here was 52.9 seconds. So that's really quick. You can see here it's generated some different ideas. And this one you can see is a little bit more powerful than the one we used before. And it's pretty cool. So some of these results are not perfect, but you, you get the idea here. So for some reason, um, this thing here isn't working the same as the first time I used it. And there were some errors popping up. So um, there should actually be more results than this. There should actually be 16 of them. But what you do from here, and I may get an error doing this, is you're gonna go now to the next step where in here, you gotta type in the number. So you can see each one of these is assigned with a number from zero through to whatever. So, you know, one, two, three, four. So let's just say, you know, in this case, I really like number six. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go to the fav ID and I type in six over here instead of three. And then I'm gonna click on the little thing here to run it, it's now selected. And then now we can submit it as a candidate to the server. And what it'll do is it'll take this one and generate some more variations of this one here. Now what you'd wanna change here is this skip rate. If you make the skip rate more, it's gonna be a lot of differences between this result here. If you set that skip rate closer to zero, they're all gonna be more or less the same. So that's just how much variation you want. And then the number of images is over here. So you can just go and click on this. And you can see here in my case, I've gotten an error that pops up and I've kind of, contacted people, I've tried to figure out what's going on here and I couldn't really get any satisfa satisfactory answers to solve this. But the first time I did this, it really did work. So if you're not having this issue, hopefully what will happen here is you'll have a whole bunch of results pop up. If that's the case, what you do is you go down to the next step and just read the, the prompts here, they tell you what to do. Then you put in a number of the one out of those newly generated ones that you want to select. And then you'll just keep running these different uh, commands here. And then you can right click on the final image and just save it somewhere on your computer. So for me anyway, I would be happy just taking this result here and just getting my screen snip tool and just doing a snip of this result here and then just saving it somewhere on my computer. Because on the end of the day, we don't wanna just to make the art for us. We wanna just have something that we can use as a tool for the art we're already doing, just to spit out some ideas and we can supplement it into our workflow. Because at the end of the day, we still wanna make our own art. So you can see, this is something really cool you guys can try out. I really like this one. So now that you kind of know how it works, and hopefully you guys don't get the same error here, but all of the explanations are here. It's very simple to use. Um, you can go ahead now, go back up, type in some different um, prompts up here where the prompt is, then run the whole thing again. In fact, instead of going through each one of these individually, you can just go up here to runtime and then run all, and it'll just sequentially run through these. And you can run that as many times as you want to get different results with different prompts or even using the same prompts. So let's go ahead just for a bit of fun and try out a few more prompts. And I'll show you some of the results I've gotten in the past as well and how cool this AI is. So as cool as chihuahuas are, let's try some other things. So let's go up and go to edit and let's go to clear all outputs. 
and let's scroll down and let's go over to our prompt. So I won't fill myself typing the whole time because it just slows things down. So I'm gonna go type it in, then I'll run it and I'll show you the results. So I'll go through a few and uh, we'll see what they look like. So I've typed in an oil painting of a dinosaur walking along a sandy beach. I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And here you can see the result, which is pretty amazing. I really like this one down here. Obviously you're gonna have different results because it's all different, but uh, just look at that. I mean, it's like, this is almost like something that would be really good for like concept artists, like alien worlds or something. So I really like number 14 here. I'm gonna quickly see, once again, it might not work, but I'm gonna see if I can um, get that one a little bit more refined. So I'm gonna just type in 14 here, selected it, and I'm just gonna run it and see if I can submit it as a candidate for the fusion. Okay, so it actually worked this time. So now you can see it's taken that one I've selected up here, that ID, the favorite ID, and it's made some variations of that one, which was um, in this case, number 14 here, which I really liked. And you can see here, they're all a little bit different, but more or less the same. Now, if you wanted to make the differences more extreme, like I said, you can change the skip rate value here to something higher. The more it goes down to zero, the less it's gonna be. So I really like number eight. So I'm gonna come down here on step three. I'm gonna take number eight. And then I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna see if this works, it may not. We'll see if it works. Okay, so it's selected it. And then I'm gonna click here and it should upscale it to something with a bit more resolution. So hopefully, okay, so here it's failed, unfortunately. I don't really know why it does it. Sometimes it does, some, sometimes it doesn't. So um, if this worked, it would have upscaled it. So at least you guys kind of get how this works and um, what you what it should do. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But as long as you can kind of get these results up here, um, that's more than enough. In fact, having this sort of palette that you can just screenshot of different ideas, little snippets, uh, can be really handy when you're just doing some brainstorming. So at this point, I think I've said enough about this. I'm gonna cut this video short at this point so it doesn't get too long. But yeah, I really hope that you guys have had some enjoyment with this and uh, definitely try out different prompts, change it up a little bit, run different versions of the same prompt and uh, just snip this results that you like. And um, if this has been a useful tutorial, there's not a lot of videos out there on AI for absolute beginners. Definitely give it a like, check out some of my other content. It really means a lot to me. I do put a lot of work into this and uh, just the likes and the subscribes and even the support on Patreon. It's just all a really big help and I do appreciate it.